Do you know that you can interact with elements in Storyline by using the mouse wheel? I found an interesting YouTube video by uh, Jonathan from uh, eLearning Unpacked. Uh, and in his video, he uses JavaScript to add a zoom functionality to a 360 degree image. And the user can zoom in and out by using the mouse wheel. I've linked his video in the description. Consider checking him out. He has a lot of well-explained tutorials, as well as a lot of resources available on his website. Anyway, so this code, which is available on his website, implements a zoom functionality on a slide if the user scrolls using the mouse wheel. It affects all slide elements. If I'm to add this code to an execute JavaScript trigger that runs on timeline start, this happens. Pretty cool. Here's a quick rundown of how it does that. So basically it sets an initial minimum zoom level of 1 for the element. A scale of 1 means no zoom. A scale of 1 is the current scale of the element. This means that each scroll will change the scale of the object by 0.1 and this defines the maximum scale limit. The element can't be scaled beyond this value. Currently it's set to 2, so the element will scale up to 2 times its size. If this were 4, we could scale it up to 4 times its original size. This selects the slide container and this applies a CSS transition effect to the element's transform, which means that our scaling will happen in 0.1 seconds. This part adds an event listener to the slide container for the wheel event, which is triggered when the user scrolls the mouse wheel over the element. This part checks if you're scrolling upwards, meaning away from you, and adds the scale step amount to the scale while the max scale value is not reached or exceeded. And this part checks if you're scrolling down, meaning towards you, and then subtracts scale steps until our scale value reaches our initial value of 1. Now this works great, however there is a problem with it. I ran this code on one slide and then I couldn't get it to stop zooming, so once I ran it on one slide, all slides were zooming in. I have tried several solutions to this, but alas, I failed. The things I tried didn't work. Uh, and I said, you know what, maybe I'll just leave it as is for now because I wanted to focus on GSAP anyway. Because what's interesting about this code is that we can use the event listener for the mouse wheel to scale objects using GSAP, which I think is easier to control. The main advantage of GSAP is that I can zoom the entire slide just like before, or I can target specific elements with greater precision, like this. Notice that only one of the monkeys is scaling. If I do the same with CSS transforms, the image glitches a bit and changes position, which is something I don't want. So, all right, to set this up, I'm gonna have to give my image here an accessibility name then select it in the code by using said name. Then I'm gonna replace the bit where CSS transforms are applied with my GSAP animation. The final code is gonna look like this. I replaced the if statements here with min and max functions, which do the same thing as the if statements, but I felt like this change made the code easier to read this always selects the minimum value between uh, these two, ensuring that the scale does not exceed max scale. And this one selects the maximum value between these two, ensuring that the scale doesn't drop below 1. And I use GSAP to target the image I want to scale, then set its scale to my scale variable, which changes when I scroll using the mouse wheel. Great. And as I said, I can still select the entire slide container if I want and scale it too, like this. So what else can we do? Well, look at this. I have all the monkeys selected and by hovering over one of them and scrolling on my mouse wheel, I can get them all to move in sync. Here's what I changed to do this. Now I gave all the monkey images the same accessibility name, monkey 
And then I select them all using query selector all. And then I added a stagger of 0.5 seconds to my GSAP here. This means that the first monkey will animate, then the second monkey will animate after 0.5 seconds, then the third will animate 0.5 seconds after the second one, and so on and so forth. Then I figured maybe it's a bit clunky to hover over elements while you're scaling them, since your mouse can slip and ruin the fluid nature of the animation. So here I added this mouse image that I can hover over to perform the same animation. I added this accessibility name to that image, then grabbed a reference to it so I can use it in my code. And the other thing I changed was the event listener to listen for the events on the mouse image. Now, since my GSAP animation still has the monkeys as the animation target, we get this cool effect. So with this system in place, you can change other properties of the image using GSAP. You can lower its opacity. You can change its rotation. and you can even change its position. These are all very cool applications which make it so that you're basically using the mouse wheel like a slider. Well, that's about it for this one. I just wanna thank Jonathan from uh, eLearning Unpacked for sharing this code and thank you all for watching.